wow it's a beautiful bright thursday morning and a lot of beautiful things are happening out there so no matter what you are hearing no matter the negative things that have come to you don't forget that you can make a difference and you are making beautiful things happen for our great nation nigeria so this morning dialogue box is on on blossom nigeria and we are making progress so we are going to be talking about you know a continuation of what we started yesterday doing business in nigeria how we can work towards an enabling environment for doing business in nigeria but today we'll focus on taxation reviewing taxation policies in nigeria and how they border um, or affect businesses either negatively or positively and areas where we think the country can improve on we'll also we'll be talking about them so we need you to be right there to listen attentively and also make your contributions as we go on with the discussion but before we move fully into our discussion our topic for today we'd like to give you some information coming to us and uh, some of them are not too good but we believe that government should do something about them because we in uh, the blossom nigeria whatever it is we are doing it is for the an improved society that we all can be proud of so we can make a difference you can make a difference and we can contribute our quota to nation building all right we have it that a tanker carrying petroleum products has exploded along the benin sapele highway and burnt more than 25 people to death that was really a tragic one and we believe that emergency response in nigeria should improve we shouldn't have it the way it is at present because a lot of times the terrible actions would have taken place before the emergency uh, response uh, team will arrive and a lot of times it's not really very helpful so we want a situation or we look forward to a situation where we can have people on ground emergency numbers that people can easily reach when there are fire disasters maybe from such events because it even burned cars that were around the location at that particular time more than 10 cars were also burned so we believe that emergency response should be given a prior attention more people should have the numbers everybody should be able to say not just calling 911 and when you dial the number you are not even sure of who is going to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry of who is going to respond so we are we are talking about an emergency response team that is up to the task and they are able to respond to anything at any point in time and they are 247 in other words 24 hours there's always a team on duty so we look forward to better response from this angle from the federal government the state government and every level of government all right and that's also um, expressing our condolences to families that may have lost maybe some of their family members as a result of that explosion some of them just went out to trade and they just were consumed on a fire that they never knew how it came about so our heart goes out to them then we have the federal inland revenue service first they have directed landlords and um, those who are into properties to collect and remit six percent of stamp duty tenancy and lease agreement so that they do not fall foul of the stamp duty act so they have the stamp duty act and they are directing nigerians everywhere that for every tenancy agreement every property lease there must be six percent that should be charged and it should be remitted to the federal inland revenue service and they've been they've been uh, doing a lot to give more information on what this is all about so we look forward to having a better um, a smoother system that nigerians has a lot of people are still like asking what is a stamp duty collection act all about is not too clear to a lot and uh, we think more information and maybe more um 
enlightenment campaigns can go out to give more explanation about what the Stamp Duty Act is all about. Then a video has surfaced online showing the execution of five persons by masked men suspected to be Boko Haram fighters. So the slain persons are believed to be aid workers captured during a raid in Monguno local government area in Bonu State. Uh, that was on June 13th. Uh, last month. Then, meanwhile, the president has condemned the act. Then he assured the families of uh, those that lost their family members to that uh, execution that the government will continue to do everything possible to wipe out every vestige of Boko Haram from the northeastern part of Nigeria. So, whatever that means, the president is reassuring Nigerians that his government is uh, dedicated and committed to wiping out every vestige of Boko Haram in Nigeria. But beyond just giving these assurances, we don't need to wait for this because it's not a very good news, even on the international scene, seeing that five people were, were executed, execution of five people or five members of maybe some humanitarian uh, aid workers, it was not, it's not a very good news, and we think that the government should do much more in stepping up more security measures to tackle what is currently going on out there. If you read more of, of the story, which we believe you can, you discover that a lot of demands were made, and these people were actually captured since last month, in the month of June, and uh, about $500,000 were demanded from this uh, set of people, but maybe they didn't get their response, and whatever it was, the government could not also contain it. So that's a lapse on the part of the government, and we believe that it can do better than what we just heard. Then the Senate has confirmed the appointment of Suleiman Sani as a career ambassador, and 39 others as non-career ambassadors. So that's just like a heads up for us to know that 40 new ambassadors have been approved by the Senate. Then the Senate President Ahmed Lawan has urged President Mohamed Buhari to present the 2021 budget. That's the budget estimates latest by September ending so that they can start reviewing uh, the 2021 budget. So that's coming from the Senate also. Then we have it that Lagos state government officials who were on COVID-19 monitoring were attacked and shot at a hotel in Ipaja in Lagos. So that's also a, an area where government should do much more. That means that security needs a lot of attention, both at the state level and at the federal level. We want to hear better news, not um, some of the things that just came to us now. And. Um, a good one this time around. The Lagos state government has applauded the Muka Foam Limited for the donation of 500 mattresses for the equipment of the state's isolation centers in the treatment of the COVID-19 patients. So this is a, a very good one from the government, from the Muka, Muka Foam. And the government has been excited about it. So it was actually the governor of uh, Lagos state someone who that gave this uh, commendation to the company and also he applauded their efforts and told them to continue in that path. That's a very good one. Then another good news reaching us is that a 10-year-old Nigerian girl, just a second, <clears throat> a 10-year-old Nigerian girl, Emanuela Oziofu from Edo State, Nigeria, has been hired to teach coding to pupils in her age group in Southfield Primary School, United Kingdom. She is a teacher of the after-school coding club. Can you beat that? A 10-year-old Nigerian girl was hired by a school in the United Kingdom to teach coding, uh, yes, just coding to pupils in her age group. But the point is this. This is really a very big and a very good news for Nigeria, telling us that we have a lot of geniuses. And if, you, you've, been, if you've been following us, you will hear us talk about some very, very outstanding talents that, that have been doing very well 
both on the international scene and on the national scene. A lot has been happening in that regard. Those in the academics, those who have been distinguished in different talents that they've exhibited. So this is a very big one coming from Emanuela Oziofa. We say big congratulations to this 10-year-old who has been employed as a teacher to teach her age group coding in her school, Southfield Primary School in the United Kingdom. So that's good. So like we said earlier, not everything that you hear is negative from Nigeria. You might hear some that are not too good, but it does not mean that we give up hope. It's just for us to let the government know that it can do much more and a lot more is expected from them. Then a quick one, we have also another good news reaching us that Dara Soft Consulting in partnership with Whistler Communications that's the publisher of the Whistler Online, is set to empower youth with online entrepreneurial creative skills needed in the digital world. So the first in the series will commence on Monday, August 10th for 25 participants. And this is a big one for the Dara Soft Consulting and Whistler Communications, going all out to train about 25 youths for free. And this is just the first stage. According to them, it will continue. And for this first stage, they are set to start on the 10th of August. So we say big thumbs up to Dara Soft Consulting and Whistler Communications. That's a very good one. Then a quick one for us to know that we also have a role to play. If uh, Nigeria as a government can organize interfaith uh, prayers, we can also do much more. We have it that interfaith clerics begin 21 days intercessory prayers for the nation. And at the opening ceremony, the group consisting of prominent Christians and Islamic clerics said that the spiritual exercise is to strengthen the country's unity amidst the security challenges, as well as praying for the sustained progress of the nation under President Buhari. So we see it as a good step in the right direction. And like I said, everyone can be a part of this. You can be an intercessor praying for your nation, knowing fully well that if the country is not in peace, you can never be in peace in such a, a contest. So we believe that this is a, a very good uh, program from the government organizing intercessory prayers from uh, an interdenominational one. But wherever you are, even if you don't attend this, you can pray in your house and you can make power available to cause the right changes. All right. So we move on this morning talking about our work on the business scene, doing business in Nigeria, improving the business environment in Nigeria. So we'll give you some heads up. Yesterday we talked about how every, everything that has to do with doing business, a lot of it bordered on uncertainty as the ambassador to Nigeria, Bridget Ori talked about during her presentation, she said that most of the reasons or the major reasons why people outside Nigeria are not very comfortable to invest in Nigeria is a risk, <coughs> excuse me, the risk of doing business is high, uncertainty, and even political instability that she made reference to. So we took it up from there and we also got to a point where we looked at areas where multiple taxation comes in, where companies are not very sure of their profit margin because they are paying for maybe this tax today, tomorrow another one can come in another shade and manner, and they are not happy about it, especially for foreign investors. So we are looking at this so that we can work towards improving the business environment for our nation, Nigeria. So we'll be focusing on taxation today. We'll just give you <clears throat> some heads up in, in this regard. Just a second. All right. Okay. Okay, I think I need, Victor, I need you to remove your sign on for your phone. So we need uh, more details on this, which I'll be giving you shortly. So while the, um, where we have the information, 
while we get it uh, closer to us, I would just like you to have it in mind that doing business in Nigeria has been very, very challenging for lots of people, especially those that are outside the country. They have some very, very funny uh, reasons that they allude to, like we talked about taxation is one of them, corruption is another. They also allude to the power sector that has not been very stable. So, okay, the phone is ready now. I'll just give you some briefs so that we have this and we we'll discuss from this angle. All right, like, like as I was saying, doing business in Nigeria could be a wonderful experience when your business venture succeeds. However, before success, there could be great challenges and difficulties, and this is a reality on ground. So the World Bank had uh, a study on doing business in Nigeria and it gave us the top five challenges that most businesses face. According to the, their reports, they said, number one, access to capital and credit has been a major challenge uh, talking about doing business in Nigeria. Then the next point is electricity and power supply has been another big challenge when people don't have very good access to electricity and power supply. They invest rather on alternative so uh, power supply and they spend a lot more. So that increases their overhead cost for doing business. Then uh, they also talked about government regulations under which we'll be discussing taxation today. Then bribery and corruption. We also have security challenges. Very, very, a very a uh, key aspect that government, though they are looking into, we think they should do much more and put everything inside their effort to ensure that Nigeria is safe. Because if the country is not safe, you can never sell a conflict region to anybody to come and invest, no matter how much of mineral resources or whatever you have in that land. As far as there is conflict in that land, Nobody will want to come and do any form of business. So security is now a little challenging because hearing of kidnappings, hearing of terrorism going on in some part of the Northeast region, hearing of different things that have to do with banditry, armed robbery, and even some very funny killings that can maybe investigation may not be able to uh, unearth. So we still need to do a lot in our quest for a safer Nigeria for businesses to thrive. Now, talking about the aspect of uh, taxation on our doing business uh, index, let's just give us a brief background on this. First of all, in 2015, out of 189 countries, Nigeria was ranked 169th in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business report. You can imagine out of 189 countries, Nigeria was ranked 169th. That's not very good. Then the report also said that 80% of new businesses and startups in Nigeria, they fail within the first three years. So doing business in Nigeria could be rewarding and satisfying if the taxation system uh, may be refined, reviewed, for especially for small and startup businesses. So it's also worthy of note that African countries rank low on the World Bank's ease of doing business ratings. This is mostly due to the difficulty involved with setting up a business. For instance, in Nigeria, it can take between two weeks to one month to start up a business, which always involves jumping through a lot of regulatory hoops. So the government is becoming more supportive of local startup uh, businesses. But despite this uh, general improve or improvement in, in the support system, for those that are coming from outside the country, they still see a lot of hurdles for them to cross. And one of them is the issue of taxation. So what should be the way forward? Because when they complain of multiple taxation and the fact that they do a lot of, uh, a lot of levies that will just come in different forms, which are not very formal and not well accounted for, a lot of them can, can be troubled out and some of them end up you know, moving out. They move their businesses out no matter what 
the profit was supposed to be. When they look at all the holdings, they, they go out. So even though it's affecting foreign investors, it's also affecting local businesses. But for local businesses, maybe some of them can still pull through when they know the system and they see that, okay, it's our country, let's just move on. But for some, they think they can get it better out there, so they would rather go. So what do you think should be the way forward, especially in tackling the issue of taxation? Taxation is a, is a key point, a major income earner for the government is a good one, but if it is not well handled, it can be abused and it can become a major aspect. Have like his or her, let's use uh, her for, for the country, which we are referring to. The, the taxation can lead to her Achilles heel. That is a major problem. So what is the way forward? You are a lawyer, you have some experiences with this, or you think you have some solutions in mind. So send us a message right now and let us know what you think should be, the, because this is a very key point and we should work on improving Nigeria's business environment. We should create an business in Nigeria. You can also call us on 90 5107 very key, 90 All right, so let's just take a few comments here while we wait for you to send in your own comment. You can also call us. We have Savior Unduka. He says, good morning, Blossom Nigeria. Interesting topic. Truly, multiple taxes has led to the downfall of many businesses. If the Nigerian government can enact favorable and progressive tax laws and policies, it will definitely breed successful and finance healthy business organizations. All right. So if the Nigerian government, according to you, can enact favorable and progressive tax laws and policies, so what do you think are these favorable and progressive tax laws and policies that will lead to a successful and finance-healthy business organization for us as a country. So a quick one from Savior Nduka, very key point that he has made here, but we just would like to know how. How can they enact these favorable and progressive tax laws? So it can be you. You might even have an idea of what these uh, favorable and progressive tax laws should be. So let's also get everyone to know that taxation is not punishment. That's why a lot of times over there in the West, you hear of people who are being prosecuted for tax evasion or whatever. They see that maybe it's not compulsory. But in Africa, we still see people that they don't even, they don't see it as anything that they should give themselves to. But coming from that Western and American climate, business climate, we all know that they don't joke with these things and in africa it should not be different so the ease of doing business should be better if we have some of these measures in place so what do you think should be a very good way to handle taxation so that in order for it not to be an achilles heel it can actually become a very good point for the government to thread on in moving towards getting in more investors bring attract them to come in help to improve our economy because when we have more businesses coming into the country to set up they create more job opportunities employment opportunities are more the ease of doing business is better people can relate more in the business world and a lot of times you have a system that is just, you know, moving back to back, everything is working. But when those who are investing, it's like they don't, they, they are just not there. Even the local manufacturers, it's like you are begging them to do business. That is not it at all. So we'll have you call us, and when you call us, let us know what exactly is your suggestion. What should be the favorable and progressive tax laws according to what are... Uh, uh, analyst Savior Unduka has suggested. If you know it, we can also have some of that. And also, we know that we don't want a situation where every time government is bringing out different taxes, like we talked about stamp duty collection this morning, 
For some, they see it as additional tax. Why should there be a form of, um, apart from the regular taxation they are doing, government is now talking about stamp duty tax. So that's for us, it's not a very good one. And we think it can be better. So whatever the government needs to do, tackle these issues, areas where the public needs better education, it should be done. Because when people are not well enlightened about different things, they may not respond well. The response level will be very low if they don't have full understanding of what that thing is all about. And that's a very, very key point. So then for the government to also get the public, both the investing public from the from local uh, investors, for them to also do the needful, they need to know what this is all about. So send us your opinion about this. Let us know what you think and let us know what, according to you, taxation should involve. And even while we are expecting your comment on taxation, don't forget that we also mentioned other areas where businesses are currently having challenges, access to capital and credit very key points which through the central bank of nigeria we like we talked about the anchor borrowers program from the for, for, from the cbn and for that we were able to link it to how you can as a business take advantage of a scheme like that and you know lay access to some credit so but for that not everybody may know about it so access to credit is still a major issue so why that one is going on we also have the issue of power supply is a major challenge that most Nigerians and foreigners are still not comfortable with. But we believe that the present government uh, government is doing something in this regard, working towards getting more people, more investors, because the uh, uh, former Minister of Power, um, Raji Fashola, made mention of the fact that one of the areas where the power sector has been having a lot of issues is the fact that they don't have enough investors. So whatever they mean by that, more Nigerians should be carried along. Like we said earlier, they need to understand what these things are meant for, the implication of these things, so that they can buy into the vision. So if they need more investors, private sector investors, then everything should also be done to uh, safeguard the system, the process, so that it can work out well. Then we also have the challenge of government regulations, which we are talking about. We have the challenge of security, which we have mentioned, and we have also said that government should do a lot more than just giving uh, public comment and telling us that they are working towards eradicating maybe Boko Haram, for instance, and the rest. It is beyond that. When people are not confident of a safe haven for their businesses, they can never come and invest. So with all that we have said, taxation is also a major key point. And we believe that multiple taxation should be avoided by all means. Government should not bring in taxes in different forms and shades. If you are taxing them, let's assume the tax is 9% and they are supposed to tax for 1, 2, 3. Don't make it 4, 5, 6 because you want to maybe get more from them. No, they will never be confident to invest more. And it will also affect other prospective investors that would have come into that place or into that land. And this time around, we are talking about Nigeria. So, number one, for us, avoid multiple taxation. Very, very good. Just a second. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, ma. This is um, Coco on the line. All right, Coco, good morning. You're welcome to Dialogue Box on Blossom Nigeria. Thank you very much, ma. All right. Um, discussion about the favorable tax laws. Yeah. What I feel the government should do is that like for um, business that are just starting, mm. I feel that because, yes, I know the government is trying. Yes, it's, it's true. The government is trying because according to them, they said them, according to paper, like I read this morning, mm. they said them that they give them six months before they start paying tax. Okay. So, Yes, that is good, but I feel that such policies should be extended. Okay. So, like maybe a year or two. That is why you, 
That is why we see that many small businesses in Nigeria, they fail. Why? Because of multiple taxes. So these small businesses should start paying that, uh, their tax maybe after two years mm. of starting. So that is my contribution. All right. Thank you so much, Coco. We appreciate your Thank call. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Thank right. You. All right. Okay, so that's from Coco suggesting that government should give a form of a moratorium to those who are just starting businesses. That even though they have a good one that they give them about three to six months before they start taxing them, he believes that it should be increased to one or two years. That for that period, they should not be taxed. Do you share the same um, idea? Do you believe that that will work for a system like uh, the Nigerian system? So whatever you also think, you can also send in your comments and your opinion. You can also call. If you can quickly call before we round off this, you can also go ahead and call. So we're talking about some of the things the government should avoid if they really want to retain these investors and they want to attract new ones to come. We've talked about multiple taxation, that they should avoid it. Then we're talking about avoiding different shades of levies apart from taxation which can be formal and maybe they can say okay government introduce a new tax but they also have different forms of levies that are non-formal they are not government may not even be aware but different levies can come from different uh, agencies and that is not good at all so we think that government should also avoid that by all means. Then in addition to this, a lot of education should be done. Enlightenment. More and more people should understand what taxation is all about. Like we said earlier, in the West, it looks as if people are more aware of taxation than what is obtainable here in Nigeria and in other parts of Africa. Ask a, a, a very an average businessman, what is taxation? What's the essence of taxation? Why should government go ahead and tax? A lot of them don't know. They just see it as government collecting money from them, but they don't even know what's the essence of this um, exercise and what it is really meant for and the benefit to the system that they are operating from. So we also think that the third point is that better education, enlightenment, should be carried out about this particular policy so that more and more people can participate. Because like we said, if they don't understand a vision, they can never buy into a vision they never understood. All right, we'll look forward to talking some more. But we believe that you have gotten something from this and you maybe you still want to say something to us or contribute something that other people can read and be a part of. You can send your comments to Blossom Nigeria as our page on Facebook, and you can also visit our website, www.blossomnigeria.com. So while we do this, let's not forget that Friday is around the corner, and we will be talking presidency tomorrow. So tomorrow is Let's Talk Presidency. So you join us. Last week, we talked about uh, Babatunde Raji Fashola, and uh, he's been very, very, he's been doing well. Let's just Say, say, use that uh, particular term. So for tomorrow, when we come on board, we'll let you know who our candidate is. But we'll get you everything. We'll have the e-card. Everything will go out on our website and on our Facebook page to later today. All right. So this is Dialogue Box on Blossom Nigeria. And we trust that you have gotten something very good. And like we have said, everywhere you are, see yourself as a major contributor to making Nigeria better. We are the next generation of a newer, better, and stronger Nigeria. I am Blossom, and I believe in a Nigerian dream. <laughs>